Dear Mr. Smith, I've never seen anything on your show about some unsung heroes of the two world wars and in Korea. I'm talking about homing pigeons who risked their lives to bring back urgent messages in battle. And this letter is signed by Dick Walker of Wichita, Kansas. That's his picture. Now he continues, on one of your earlier shows, you saluted the last of the Civil War veterans from the North and the South. Now I'm asking you to pay tribute to another group of war heroes who vanished too, those wonderful real life battle birds, the homing pigeon. Yes, Dick, motors and missiles and scientific methods of communication have finally made the homing pigeon obsolete. But several years ago, before the Army Pigeon Corps was disbanded, we visited the man who commanded the 54,000 pigeons of World War II. He's Otto Meyer, once technical advisor at the Signal Corps Pigeon Breeding and Training Center Communication Headquarters at Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. You are hearing the sounds and cooing of homing pigeons, the nucleus of the Pigeon Service, U.S. Army Signal Corps. In battle, there are times when radio silence must be maintained. Wire cannot be strung. Other means of communications may not be available. That's when the Signal Corps calls upon these feathered couriers of battle. And now, for a special demonstration before you ask for it, two Signal Corps planes are in the air some 12 miles from here. We are now going to show you the latest techniques for dropping pigeons behind enemy lines to American secret agents or to advanced patrols where other means of communications cannot be used. In a moment, eight pigeons will be dropped. There goes the chute. There are two soldiers down there. Now, once on the ground, the pigeons will be removed from the basket attached to the parachute and then be released for the flight back home. What's happening now has happened in many battle areas. Signal pigeons drop to patrols, to scouts, to agents in back of enemy lines. In war, they wing homeward to mobile unit trucks with vital messages. For us, to show that each bird not only knows his way back home, but actually can fly to a small, specific loft, each will carry a message with a different loft number, like this. My home at Fort Monmouth is loft number three. And he wings his way toward loft number three, along with others who carry numbers one through eight. Yes, they are homeward bound. Before they arrive, meet a recruit in the U.S. Pigeon Force. This is a little youngster about eight days of age. Yes, he has his foot in it. This is his identification leg band. It carries the last two numbers of the calendar year in which he was hatched, plus his serial number. He was hatched in the Army. He'll probably stay in the Army the rest of his life. At 30 days, he'll start to fly. Be given short hops, then longer flights. Then finally, he'd be flown a distance of 600 miles. For the first 12 months, he will remain single. His home will be one of these bachelor perches in loft number three. At the age of one, we'll select a bride for him. She too is in the army. Together, they'll raise a family. Mom will sit on the eggs in the morning while dad flies. On his return, we'll send mom out for her daily exercise flight. You know, pigeons are just like people. They're no two quite alike. But they have something to be cooing about. They never get a divorce. They stay mated for life. We don't know what may happen to this little fella. He may lack the required reliability, speed, and endurance. Or he may be capable of performing some outstanding flight, like one of these 23 war heroes. Each of these birds have carried 25 or more messages during combat. This is Caesar. Caesar was parachuted north of Rome. He flew back to his home loft in North Africa, flying a distance of over 300 miles, most of it over water over the Mediterranean and Miss Fort Monmouth, at one time the only means of communication for an entire regiment in the Battle of the Bulge. And Yank, who once flew 90 miles in 110 minutes for General Patton. And G.I. Joe, the greatest military pigeon in history. 
he is credited with saving the lives of 1,000 British soldiers. Here they come, sir. There they are, those eight pigeons you saw parachuted. Their ability to return home from great distances is a mystery which has baffled scientists for years. How much longer it will remain a secret in this age of scientific miracles, we do not know. My home at Fort Monmouth is loft number three. Yes, speed, reliability, and endurance. In World War II, 99% of all messages sent by pigeons were delivered safely. Well, goodbye now from Fort Monmouth, New Jersey.